Okay, in all seriousness, that's what you need to do. I've gone in and set the clocks as high as they'd go, played around with the voltages, fan curve, and memory overclockings, which I'll say really quickly that the memory really doesn't take well to overclocks. It crashes with just about any kind of overclock, especially when I have my voltages up. And all of this goes for both the 5700 and 5700 XT. Another thing is that they don't seem to care much about the overclock I set them to. The minimum doesn't actually raise the minimum frequency, and I know it's because there's a state before it, but unlike older versions of Wattman, it doesn't really say that. Plus, while the maximum overclock does ultimately reach higher clocks, it doesn't seem like it's really trying to push it there, even at 100% usage. In the end, I could only ever reach right at the same performance I got from AMD's auto overclock feature in Wattman. There may be a single frame difference in averages, but then the minimum or maximum would go down. Basically, using the auto overclock feature is what I suggest doing, and honestly, while I'm somewhat phrasing this as a negative, it's not much different from NVIDIA's RTX GPUs. The new auto overclock from MSI Afterburner gets right at the same performance you can expect from manually overclocking. There can be a slight difference here and there, but it's not that much of one. Moving back to the 5700 series, some of these issues could change, as there is clearly something wrong when a GPU goes directly from working to a crash. With most GPUs, it typically throws up artifacts first, but especially with a memory overclock, you get that annoying green screen instead. AMD will hopefully fix some of these issues in a driver update, but they also incorporated a ridiculous maximum boost clock to both GPUs. And while this has been used in the past with previous AMD cards, Wattman will let you up the boost clock a ton more. Now, it lets you get just 125 MHz over the boost clock of the 5700 and 245 MHz on the 5700 XT. As an example, on previous cards, my Sapphire Vega 56 has a boost of 1512 MHz, yet in Wattman, I can technically push it all the way to 2400. That's nearly 900 MHz. Plus, you can only give the 5700 20% more power. And I get it. Most users likely won't be able to max out even the current limits, but plenty will. I could boost my 5700 all the way up and get through benchmarks. My 5700 XT could get close, but every GPU will be different, and some will likely be able to get there. Maybe third-party overclocking tools will let you, but I had issues, so who knows? At first, I thought it was to keep the 5700 from getting too close to the 5700 XT, but while it is higher, the 5700 XT has one as well. I mean, it could stop it from getting too close to the Radeon 7, but I don't think that's why. You can look at it as them having a great auto overclock, and there can be a pretty nice difference, but really, I don't know why they did it. Maybe third-party cards will help push it further, but even if they fix the issues without removing the maximum boost clock for most GPUs, I doubt we'll see much of a difference. With that said, I'm not saying these are bad or anything, I've actually been working on a review that I should have up in the next day or two. Anyway, I know this video was super short, but I've had quite a few fans asking me how to overclock Navi, and with the cards getting into the hands of consumers, I figured I would discuss it. So while that does it for today, let me know what your craziest Navi benchmark is in the description below. And if you liked the video, please subscribe. And as always, have a great day.